Man, got around. OG7 back here. And today, just like each and every day, we're all alive and above the ground, taking in that good prana, baby. Animating and invigorating our very existence, dude, on a cellular level. I'm going to share with you guys some stories of victory and glory. The victory of understanding that, dude, even if a dude is straight, man, he may have a bi tendency. And the glory when you understand, no matter what your sexual preference is, just do you, but don't try to force it on other people. Because, dude, sometimes you try to force something on somebody, you make them go inside and live by beast mode law. And if dudes don't know how to control their inner animal, they may rip off your motherfucking head. So without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video, which is really going to be a mind-expanding video, dude. It's going to change your whole paradigm, bro. And it's going to give you an altered experience of the reality of maximum security prison. The topic of today's video is the top five ways straight men get turned out in prison. And since I want to respect your time, dude, and make this video short, I want to make it a five-minute video. I'm going to spend about one minute on each topic. And these are not these are in reverse order. So number one is a drug debt. Hey man, in prison, dude, everything is, is an excuse to take your butt cheeks, bro. And a, a lot of you guys come on here talking about, oh, there's no forced grape, you know what I mean? It's all consensual. Okay, for the sake of this conversation, let's just say the forced butt grape is 25% of the situations in prison. Here's another for 25%, dude, a drug debt. A lot of times there's drugs in prison, man. There's a lot of dope dealers in prison. They were stealing dope on the street. What make you think they're going to stop? I'm not going to say any names. I got three homies. What a homie is is a dude I knew in the military that got caught up in the life. Whether he was a drug addict, he decided to start selling drugs to support his habit. Then he got out the military. He continued his drug uh, push peddling, his pharmaceutical, street pharmaceutical career on the street. Then he gets popped. Then in prison... He got, he got lieutenants and captains that work for him. They'd be sending their moms and sisters and daughters in there with drugs in their VJJ to the dude, and he's paying off correctional officers. He's selling drugs in prison, so he got money, power, clout, and status. But then you got patients in there. You got dudes in there. A patient is a dude who's on drugs. He's not the drug dealer. He's a drug addict. And so, dude, he starts getting the debt, running the debt up. And here's how it works in prison, man, because... Sometimes, man, they go ahead and give you the drugs first with the, with the unspoken rule that you're going to pay them back whatever the day is you promise to pay them back, whether it's canteen day, package day, you get money on your books day, whatever it is. And then failure to pay that debt, man, let me tell you something. Why are you going? You got a really good ass whooping coming. For some reason in maximum security prison, they use that as a penalty to, I guess, I don't know, make other dudes know you're making them you know, pay your drug debt. So not only do they whoop your ass real properly, see what happens is you get beat down, all punched in your face and your nose and your eyes and your jaw, get your teeth knocked out, get your ribs broken, bro. Maybe your arm or leg broken. You're defenseless, dude. They just got your butt up in the air going, ee, ah, ee, ah. you going to pay me my drug money back, motherfucker. Like that, it's just an excuse. So that's number, number one is the drug debt. This dude's straight, now he's gay because he got turned out because he had a drug debt from using drugs, man. Number two, man, gambling debts, right up there with drug debt. Some dudes like to gamble, they just got this. Gambling's addictive, bro. They be gambling, gambling, gambling. Oh man, I double that bet or I triple that bet. And then you can't pay. For some reason in maximum security prison, they use any excuse to take your cheeks. It's just how it is, man. I didn't make the rules, bro. This is not some fantasy, bro. This is real life. Anything you do that's going against the grain and taking your butt cheeks, yeah, you're going to get a proper ass whooping. Yeah, they're going to charge you interest. You're still going to pay the loan back. But until you do, they're going up in your butt cheeks every day, him and his homies. So, man, stay off of gambling, dude. If you're a straight dude and you don't want dudes in your cheeks, just, just do your time, man. Just work out, man, and watch TV. And if you do uh, play cards or dominoes, don't gamble. Just be like, nah, I choose not to gamble. Just do it like that. Here's number three, special favors. So here's what a special favor comes down to, dude. Like, you know, maybe you ride with your people, dude. I don't know. And then they see that you ain't got nothing, bro. Because sometimes when you get to prison, it takes a while for your money to get on your books because you got to get processed. 
you got to get a privilege card, dude, in order to get money or books. You got to have a good standing in prison. Like you got to have a program, whether you're going to school or you're going to work. You know what I'm saying? Then you get your privilege card. You're allowed to receive money on your books for, you know, canteen, toothpaste, tooth, uh, soap, uh, bar soap, you know, uh, little nicks like stuff like that, you know, chips, things like that to sustain you, right? Deodorant, you need that kind of stuff. They don't supply it in prison. So sometimes it takes a while for the money to get on your books, bro. So then, you know, your people will do you special favors. Like, hey, man, I'll lend you 10 soups, man, and two Snickers bars and then some potato chips, man. You know, and then when you get your money, man, on your books, pay me back. But then let's say you get into an argument with your old lady or your mom finds out you really did kill those people and then she just spent all the money to Lori and she turns her back on you. Now you ain't got no money. And these people that have done special favors, man. They want the payment, man. It's just max security prison. The highest level of payment is your butt cheeks, bro. So then they just, they're going up in your cheeks, bro. And you a straight dude. But I don't know if, I don't know if you consider yourself straight. It's like somebody didn't violently took your cheeks because you owed them some money or some canteen. And they're going up in you night after night, man, busting nuts, balls deep up in you. I don't know if you're still straight, but I'm, you guys let me know in the comments. And here's number four. Someone you know, a comfort buddy. So here's where it goes more into like a coercion, dude. Like they, they, it's like the pimp game, dude. Like I don't know if you guys know about pimps. I'm not. I'm not proud of this, but I had two uncles that was pimps. I had some buddies that was pimps. And I'm very curious. How do you do it? So what they say is, they find a girl who's in a bad situation, whether she's homeless or runaway, or whatever. She's got a bad drug habit, and they swoop her up like Captain Sabre. Oh no, nah, I'm taking my place. Clean you up feed you, let you rest up, everything. They treat her nice, buy her some new clothes, buy her some food, let her stay there, you know what I'm saying? Baby her, back to health. And then dude flip the script. I don't know if you've been to acting school, but they'd be like, oh man, my check got canceled, man. I ain't got no money for the place and everything. How are we gonna survive? He'd, he'd be playing mind games on her. I don't know, baby, we'll come up with something. Yeah, well, you know what? You got a gold mine between your legs, you know what I mean? And you're gonna go out there and sell that for JJ and bring me the money. Then we're going to pay the rent. And the girl be like, well, I'm not a prostitute. Oh, I can look out for you. When nobody was there for you, I looked out for you. And I did for you. You can't pay me back, motherfucker. And now he puts the gorilla pimp on him. If the psychology don't work, he put the, he turn up the heat to get the girl to start selling. Once the girl starts doing tricks, bro, then he gets some hooked on drugs or he just keeps feeding her drug habit. It's a revolving door, dude. It's like a hamster in a wheel. Same thing with your homies, man. Like, say you know a dude, like, there's this movie called Lockdown. And this dude went to prison, man, for uh, accidentally killing a dude in a fight. And he gets there, he sees his homie's been locked up since he was a teenager. His homie's been locked up since he was 15. And now they both, they both 29. And his homie's like, hey, man, I'm going to look out for you in here. You need somebody to protect you because these, these fools is on some straight weird shit and dude like hey man good looking out there so how's your family how's everybody how's bobby joe and aunt sue and, oh they doing good and everything hey man how's your girlfriend doing oh man she's you know she's riding down with me then all of a sudden the dude be like man i ain't i ain't had a girlfriend ever in my whole life man i've been in here since i was 15 years old never even had a girlfriend man what's it feel like so you start telling him what it feels like he's getting turned on he's like hey man can i just like can we just comfort each other, man? Because, you know, we from the same hood or whatever. And then you're thinking, like, he's your comfort buddy. Then your girlfriend sends you a Dear John letter. And y'all spooning together. Next thing you know, he's got a boner in your back. I'm talking about a wood, a boner. Then he's trying to slip your pants down. He's like, hey, man, what's going on? Nah, man, we got to look out for each other. We have, we comfort each other. I looked out for you, man. I gave you some zoom zoom and wham wham. We read, we read your family... We read your letters from your family together, man. We even watch TV together. We hit dominoes and stuff. So it's a comfort to somebody you know, man. And here's the number, here's the one number one, man. Which is number five. It joined the prison gang, dude. See, this is the part where I get the most hate on YouTube. Motherfuckers come on here talking about, oh, I'm capping. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm delusional. I'm lying. I'm making shit up. Nah, man. This has been my experience as a other dude. My last name is Gomez, dude. I got a Hispanic surname, dude. And I'm mixed, dude. I'm mixed Latino, African, dude, and European, right? So I'm going into the belly of the beast, homie. 
The fact I look like a brother, the black dudes is getting at me, man. The Crips, the Bloods, the BGF, the Up North brothers, man. The Bay Area brothers, right? I'm like, nah, man, I ain't with that, man. But there's some dudes, what I'm trying to share with you, some dudes was on the bus with me. They don't have the same proclivity. Like, man, I don't need a motherfucker, man. The worst thing you can do is kill me, man. But what's going to happen, baby? Why you killing me? I'm going to kill you because I'm very confident in my skills. Some dudes don't have that mentality, the mentality of a lion, of a wolf, bro, of a tiger, of a lion. And so they, they join the game because they make it very easy for you. Gang, yeah, we look out for you, Holmes. Come over here, Vato, ride with your people, Vato. You can't do this alone, Holmes. Come with your hentes like that. The next thing you know, all the things on the list, dude, they start doing special favors for you, dude. Comfort buddy, dude. Uh, you gamble with them in fun, and it all starts out in fun. But here, the gang initiation of the whole thing, when you get jumped in by a gang in prison, they all run up in your culo home. It's called love from the homies. That way, you know that you got solidarity because it's on a down low. So if you'd like to hear the real facts of maximum security prison, not some fictionalized bullshit, these other channels, man, glorifying the fucking shit. There's no glory in going to prison, dude. Then thumbs up the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. And most importantly, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, man. Hit the notification all bell because I don't know when I'm going to be putting videos up. And more importantly, share the video. So until next time, what you suffer back? Up.